Hello everyone, today we'll be going over a 36 TSX 16. This is a XLR Boost 2020 model. Very nice. So today I'll be going over showing you everything and how everything works. If I miss anything or if you have questions on anything, you can always give us a call and we'll be happy to help. Uh, first, we'll just start here with the awning. Um, you're going to want to run these awnings out until the flap is hanging straight down. Once, you're, once you see that, go ahead and stop. And then you're going to hit your retract button when you're done. If you keep holding the extend button, it will wind itself up backwards. So you don't want to do that. And then do a adjust your pitch. You're just going to simply push this arm in and then tighten down the knob. And all of the arms are the same way. So pretty easy on that. Uh, right here we have a TV hookup for outdoors. This will be where you hook your coax and power. Here's our furnace exhaust. Uh, mud dauber screens are very important. I'd highly suggest getting them. So, and then up here we have our stovetop vent. So if you're gonna be cooking bacon or fish, you're gonna want to open these tabs up. Um, you know when you're cooking so it'll vent out and then when you're done go ahead and snap the taps back into place So uh, Here we have our water heater uh, This is a anode rod slash your drain plug, but over time this anode rod is going to deteriorate so this will have to be replaced um, Inch and eighth socket on that anytime we're going to be removing the anode rod make sure to relieve the pressure Right here we have our 110 switch for the electric side of the water heater. And then you're going to have a switch on the inside for the LP side. So, and then you have two resets right here too. They'll pop out at you, you know, just push them in if they ever were to trip. Um, inside here, compartment here, we have a 30 to 50 adapter, uh, a starter sewer hose, and then a 30 to 110 adapter. Just in case your uh, power cord wasn't long enough, you could hook to an extension cord. Um, if you did do that, just make sure to only run your lights on that. Um, if you were to run your AC or microwave, it's going to end up melting your extension cord. It's just too many amps for that long of a draw. And then you have a table here too. Uh, here we have our LP tanks. Um, right here is our regulator. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, there is a little point on one side. And you're just going to flip that. Um, to suck to the other tank so And that will turn green uh, once the pressure is there and uh, once the tank was empty There'd be no more pressure there. So that would slowly turn to red And you do have a light in your compartment here a little push-button light in Front of the unit you do have some LEDs up top here Kind of hard to see in the garage here, but looks really cool. Especially at night, it really sticks out. Uh, here we have our landing leg control. Just gonna extend and retract to go up and down with your legs. Um, you will have pull pins here too. Uh, when you go to extend this, make sure to see this tip all the way through. Very important. Uh, inside here we have uh, where your generator would go, so it is pre-wired. Prepped for a Jenny. Uh, here we have our battery setup. Do have a couple fuses here, and we have our battery disconnect there. So, if you're not using the trailer. Uh, you're going to want to flip this battery disconnect off. Once you do that, no power is going into the battery or out of the battery. So you're going to want to make sure to have that battery disconnect on when you're traveling. That way you're charging as you travel. Then you have some docking lights here for hooking up at night. Um, another LP tank here.
storage. We do have a manual crank here. Um, that's going to be for our manual uh, slide out. Here we have our fresh water, which is going to be our potable water for camping out in the woods. We're going to fill this up at home. As you're filling, check your gauge. And then here we have our city water. So most campgrounds that have water, you're just going to hook here and that's going to pressurize the unit for you. And then here we have your black tank flush. So uh, I would use this as much as you can. Um, you actually have a sprayer inside your black tank that's spraying around, knocking things down. Um, remember to only use single ply toilet paper and to keep up on your chemicals. Right here we have your poles, black and a gray. Typically you want to pull your black first and then rinse the tube out with the gray water. So black water is your toilets, gray is your sinks and showers. Um, and you do have an outdoor shower here. And you, this is where your cable and satellite input's gonna be. So if the campground had cable, you're gonna hook here and it's gonna be dispersed throughout. Um, and then we do have another gray tank pole right here as well, next to the tire there. And then here we have uh, your fresh water drain. So that's going to be that white pole there. Um, and the water comes out quick too, so if you're, when you pull it, get ready to get out of the way because it comes out quick. So, which is really nice, you don't have to wait an hour and a half for your fresh water tank to drain anymore. So, And then here we have our black tank pull and dump for um, our garage bathroom so be sure to keep up on all your silicone around the exterior of the unit it's very important um, roof maintenance is very important as well they say every six months to get up on your roof and inspect your lap sealant I say at least uh, just because it's so important so many people tend to neglect it and then they find out the hard way. So um, anywhere where they screw into the roof, they apply lap sealant, and you're gonna be looking at that lap sealant, looking for any cracks, uh, bubbles. So once you find that bad spot, you're just gonna go over it with the new lap sealant. Lap sealant's the only stuff you're to use on your roof. <coughs> Here we have our sewer hose holder. This there is a manual crank for our scissor jacks. And then this here is where we're going to hook our short power at. Here we have our fuel station. You're going to have your gas pump inside there. This is your fill. And then here's your gauge and uh, pump switch. So, really sweet. Roof is fully accessible. Just going to pull these pins out, pull the ladder out, put the pins back in. 300 pounds max on the ladder. Back deck gate area, party deck. Very nice, really easy to set up too. Basically you're just gonna push, open this door up, hook it there, and then the door will open up, and that connects here. Really easy, and we'll show you when you get here on this too. Uh, it is pre-wired for a backup camera, so it's really easy for an install with that. Just take out four screws, plug the camera in, put the four screws back in, and the camera links wirelessly with the monitor that it comes with um, that would plug into your 12 volt in your vehicle. Happy Jack bed system in there. So, really cool unit. Uh, here we got our extend and retract for our scissor jacks. So, very nice. You're going to want to get the trailer level with those front landing legs. Um, once you're level, stabilize with the rears. So, I think that's about it for the outside here. Uh, I did miss these. These are our low points, which these are right by our water heater here. Low points is the excess water in the lines themselves. So the only time we're going to be using these are for winterizing and dewinterizing. Or if you had a leak somewhere, you could drain the lines by using these. These steps here are real easy. Uh, just make sure you have your door fully open. And then you're just gonna flip them right up in. I always give them a shake, just to knock any loose dirt off. 
very open floor plan. That slide out makes it look huge in here. Really nice. Uh, here we have our awning extend and retract. Slide out in and out. We have a couple light switches here. Uh, one's going to be for our awning lights. Here we have uh, our heating holding tank switch. We have our LP water heater switch and we have our water pump switch here so when we want to use that fresh water in our tank we're going to turn that pump on. And then here we're just going to press these gauges individually to get the readings. So, And then this one here is going to be for the garage gray tank and black tank and those are going to give you readings too. So. Really cool. Uh, stove top here, pretty easy. You're just gonna flip this to high, spark, and you have flame. Pretty cool. And then just make sure to have this uh, pushed down for travel. And then oven, you're just gonna put it to the pilot mode, push and hold with this knob, and then spark. And once it lit, lights uh, still press and hold for five seconds then turn to your desired temp and you do have some blue LED lights on the stove top too here we have our fan and light stove top sink here so fridge here 12 volt fridge um, so, lots of room in this fridge too, which is really nice. Um, so you have a plus and a minus here to set it, set your temperatures. Uh, that's going to be for your freezer temp setting, and that's going to be for your fridge temp setting. And then this moon here is going to be for uh, um, after eight hours it'll shut off. So. Moonlight setting. Nice area for storage. Pantry area. Oh. Um, all your remotes and some of your manuals are going to be in this drawer here. TV remote, fireplace remote. toilet on the garage this area here this door will uh, close too so you're gonna use this door and this door and it'll make a door around the bathroom area there so happy jacks um, you're gonna have a bed lift button here go up and down um, you can fold these down into beds on the bottom here um, yeah and then if you wanted to leave this top section up, you're gonna run uh, the, you're gonna flip this down into a bed and then run it all the way up. And then you're gonna pin the top bunk into these holes here. That way if you wanted to hang out down here, play cards or whatever, uh, that bunk will be up there pinned in. So, you do have an awning, extend and retract for this rear awning. Um, and some light switches. One's going to be for your awning lights back here. So yeah, really cool. And you do have a few push button lights too on the sides here. Couple vents for your toys. So, yeah. Radio, you're gonna have aux cord, Bluetooth, all that. Thermostat, pretty easy. You're just gonna hit this mode button here to switch from in between the uh, modes. Cool high, cool low, cool auto. And that's what I would run it in when I'm running my AC is cool auto. And then for heat, you just flip it to heat and then adjust your uh, temperature. So, fireplace. Um, it's push button down here actually. So, I was impressed on how much heat these things put out here. Fuse panel here, all of our 120 stuffs labeled there, all of our 12 volt stuffs labeled here. I would suggest grabbing some 15 amp fuses just to have 
for the unit just in case and then if you were to install a generator it is already equipped with the hour meter and start and prime so USB charge station light switch couch has a heater vibrator and some lighted cup holders with the USB port plug in on the cup holder as well this unit is pre-wired for uh, solar panels as well so if you were gonna go that route you're gonna have to purchase uh, the solar kit which would come with the solar controller um, and this is where the solar controller will be installed they already have wires ran here through the wall you're just gonna have to cut this out and then the controller is gonna go right there so lots of options bathroom here GFI is gonna be right here so if your outlets weren't working come here and check that GFI shower really important make sure those uh, that's latched during travel bedroom here from the slide out um, not much in here besides uh, your thermostat here for your AC so you'll be able to control that So yeah, there is some storage under the bed as well. Just lift it up. You can fit a lot of stuff under there as well. Do have a couple shelves there. Emergency window. Uh, and if you were gonna install a TV in this bedroom here, they have a backer here, so kind of feel for it before you install. And then you have your hookups here on the ceiling. So. And then as you've seen, there was a uh, slide out switch in the be bedroom there too. Yeah. Um, bypassing for this water heater. Um, we're gonna access it through this panel here. So we're gonna take these two screws out here and then we'll be able to see to the back of the water heater. There's gonna be two valves there. Right now they're bypassed because the unit is winterized. In the springtime, we're gonna wanna do opposite of what's there now because we want the t uh, tank filling. So, um, you're gonna have a water pump on here as well too. Uh, right now that water pump is sucking from the fresh tank. You are gonna flip that valve um, because there's a clear hose on that valve. And then you're gonna be able to suck your winter or your antifreeze through that by switching that valve over. So. So our pump is going to be on the other side of the unit, uh, on the off door side underneath in that front compartment area. You're going to have to access that just like you would for your water heater. So I think that's it for my show through. Like I said, if you have any questions or if I missed anything, go ahead and give us a call. There is lots of information on YouTube as well. So. Thank you guys, congratulations on your new trailer.